Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you've all been keeping well and have been able to get out and about safely if you're allowed to in your part of the world. Here in the UK, restrictions were lifted considerably during May so people can now meet up much more easily indoors as well as outdoors. They can go to events and shows in crowds now. They can even hug if they want to. We have to be a bit careful because the Indian variant and there's a very big possibility that the last stage of our unlocking of our roadmap will be delayed a bit beyond the date of 21st of June as was originally intended just to be on the safe side while we just track how things are spreading but the vast majority of people are being protected by vaccines as studies are increasingly showing which is great and over half of all UK adults have now been fully vaccinated with both doses including myself now. I had my second dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine during May with no side effects whatsoever, I'm happy to say. First time round, I'd had chills the first night and a mild headache and a sore arm that lasted a couple of days. This time, barely anything. I barely felt it in my arm at all. Mum had her second dose of the Pfizer vaccine last month and had a shingles vaccination this month too. So um, she feels very safe, I feel very safe, and I'm now much more confident about going up to London again because I haven't been into the city for a good few months now, since September last year, and it'd be nice to meet friends again who I haven't seen for ages. I'm really looking forward to that. Obviously, not everyone across the world has equal access to vaccines. We are very privileged to have such a successful vaccination programme here, but other people around the world don't have easy access to these things, so it's worth saying that if you can donate to the COVAX scheme as well, and I'll put links to that in the description, that would be greatly appreciated by them because it will just help people all around the world. Away from that though, on the flip side, I did have a bit of a health problem during May as well. I was out of commission for a week because I had a bit of a back injury. Not a severe one, thankfully, but basically since we moved in here a few years ago, we've been making do with the furniture that we inherited with the house until we can get all the rooms done over properly and stuff like that. Um, but some of the furniture wasn't ideal for my height and my back decided to finally rebel and fire a warning shot of sciatica at me which wasn't very pleasant but thankfully the worst of it only lasted a couple of days. It's eased off much more now and that's largely because I've made changes I think because I've got a brand new gaming chair. This is the Anderseat T Pro 2. This is a nice tall chair that's perfect for my height. I can lean back against it because the headrest and I've got a lumbar support pillow for my lower back on it as well. It's very adjustable, the armrests and the recline are very adjustable, all that kind of stuff. So it's ideal, it's been very comfortable. I've also got a high desk and a monitor stand for my computer, so it's much higher up. I'm not slouching over it as I was. So yeah, I've made... Um, suitable adjustments. It does seem to have helped. I'm feeling much better already. But apart from going out for a few walks and the vaccinations and my back trouble, basically the main thing I need to mention this month as per usual is entertainment. And there's a little bit of disability stuff as well I want to kick off with. So yeah, basically as per usual there's more detail in my blog post. This is always a summary of these videos and there are links in the description as well if you want to check those too. And nothing here is sponsored or gifted as always. And yeah, I'm just going to crack on with it and I hope you enjoy it. So starting off with a few little disability things and Vocalize who do audio description for theatre shows and museum tours things like that they've launched a theatre access survey for this year which basically asks you how you access the theatre before and during the pandemic and what your access needs are now and what your feelings are about going back to the theatre now so it's important to fill that in if you're disabled and enjoying the theatre because they're going to be feeding that back to the theatres to let them know what our needs are what our feelings are the survey is open until mid-August, but do try and fill it out now before you forget about it. And then with thanks to my friend Claire for recommending this, I saw Pick of the Litter, and this was on two different services, in fact. There was the first documentary film that was made, which is on Netflix, and then there's a follow-up series of the same name, Pick of the Litter, on Disney Plus as well. So they're both about how guide dogs are raised and trained in America, and it's really interesting, and the puppies are really cute, and it's really moving in many places as well. And then to cover the British side of things a little bit, I also watched a documentary on YouTube called Me and My Guide dog again recommended by my friend Claire and this basically talks to David Blunkett who's a blind MP with a dog and various other people in the UK and abroad as well about again how guide dogs are raised and trained and the difference it makes to them so that's lovely to watch as well and obviously I have seen other programs about guide dogs in the past there are lots of visually impaired vloggers who have made videos about how guide dogs are useful to them I've spoken about guide dogs on this channel in the past as well so you know I'm well aware of all that kind of stuff I just thought I'd watch those particular documentaries and then finally in terms of disability and TV a quick shout out to the game show Tipping Point who had their first first ever visually impaired contestant on recently which was great to see and yeah it was great that they were able to make the show accessible for this uh, lady called Abigail. They basically allowed her to have a support worker backstage so Abigail still had to answer the questions herself. She still had to do the quiz without any help and there was an adjudicator with her friend backstage making sure she wasn't helping but when it came to dropping
stopping the counters in the machine, which is the visual element that would otherwise be difficult. Her friend was able to tell her through the earpiece which slot would be best to put it in, where the counters are on the shelves, which ones are hanging over the edge, things like that, and then tell her exactly which moment to drop it, you know, say now, and Abigail can press the button. So yeah, it's really good they made that simple adjustment to make the show accessible, and hopefully they'll have more visually impaired contestants on there in the future. And I know they have had other disabled contestants as well. You know, I caught an episode the other day, in fact, where they had someone in a wheelchair. So they do do their best to make sure the show is as welcoming to as many people as possible, which is fantastic, as do other game shows as well. So then moving on to movies, and this month I've had a bit of a horror film binge, as I like to do now and again. And my big purchase this month was the Blu-ray box set of the first eight Saw films, because I really enjoy those films. I've seen them before, but I've always intended to buy them at some point. And this set was released to coincide with the ninth film that's just come out in cinemas called Spiral, which I'll also see at some point. But yeah, I've started going through those films, which is great. They've got extra features with them as well. If you don't know the Saw films, then it's basically about victims who are made to do awful things to themselves in order to survive. And it's very gory. And there's some nice twists in the stories as well. And the creator of the Saw films, called James Wan, is also responsible for the Insidious and Conjuring series of films as well. So I may check out those at some point too, as they're also online. But the Saw franchise is the main thing, and that's going to continue. You know, even after Spiral, there are other films being talked about in the series. So we'll have to see how things go on that front. And then I've also watched a few horror films on Netflix as well. So I've watched The Babysitter and the sequel to that, Killer Queen. They're fun films, you know, about a young man who's got a babysitter who turns out to have a very dark side and he has to adapt and do what he can in order to survive. And yeah, they're good fun and they both feature Queen songs, in fact, in their finales. There's We Are The Champions used at the end of the first film and then Killer Queen, as the title suggests, at the end of the second film. So they're good fun films. And then the other one was Escape Room as well, which, as the name suggests, is set in an extreme version of an escape room. So they have to solve these really deadly puzzles in order to survive and get out. And there are sequels planned for those films as well, The Babysitter and Escape Room. So it'll be interesting to see how those series continue in the future. And then moving on to various bits and pieces of comedy, and I really enjoyed the Series 11 finale of Taskmaster. I think it's been better than Series 10, that was good, but I think I prefer the lineup this time around. Obviously, I enjoyed seeing D Mac as a fan of his, but I think Mike Wozniak was the real star of the series because he had a couple of tasks where he came to prominence in particular with his farting task and the final prize task of the series with that big reveal. But all the contestants were great, and I'm really looking forward to Series 12, which Alex Horner said should be out around September. In particular, I'm looking forward to Victoria Coran Mitchell, who I've been wanting to be on the show for ages, as has been revealed in the podcast talking about the upcoming series. She is very logical about the way she does her tasks, which is going to be no surprise to anybody. And then, of course, there's Alan Davis, who's going to take a very different approach. I'm sure he won't be as logical as Victoria, so there'll be a big contrast between those two for a start. But all the contestants should be good as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing all of them in action. And then apart from that, on TV, I've been watching the usual stuff like Mot the Week. There's a new series of that, and Have I Got News For You, and Family Guy, and Mum and I are still listening to Just A Minute on Audible. And on YouTube, I've finished binging on stuff by Dave Gorman. I mentioned last month I've been watching Modern Life is Goodish and then I also went on to watch things like Are You Dave Gorman, his important astrology experiment and his Google Whack adventure from the old days and various other bits and pieces as well and I'd look at Terms and Conditions Apply on UK TV Play as well which isn't as good as Goodish. So basically if there's something on YouTube involving Dave Gorman whether it be you know series or little clips or interviews and stuff you know I have glanced at it I'm already aware of it so there's no point in recommending stuff to me. I've binged on everything Gorman related that I want to for the time being so I'm happy. So now my YouTube binging is done I'm now moving back over to the paid streaming services I have because there's lots of things there I want to check out and binge on and I want to make the most of my subscriptions again so on all four or all four plus because I pay these small subscriptions to remove the ads I'm now watching the original British version of Whose Line Is It Anyway that I enjoyed when I was younger I have the first two series on DVD already and I've re-watched the interviews with the creators on there that's an extra feature but Channel 4 on their catch-up service have got all 10 seasons apart from one episode in series 7 that they haven't got for some unknown reason but otherwise they've basically got the entire series Clive Anderson is a bit nervous in the first series or two but he soon settles into it and there's lots of great performers throughout the entire run and there is of course an American version of the series as well which is still going and there was a short-lived Australian version as well I may check those things out at a later date but the British version is by far the best so I'm much keener on watching that and I have also watched the two comic relief specials that are on YouTube as well they're not as good as the main show but they are still fun bits of curiosity and then finally on the comedy front I'm delighted to say that Mischief Movie Nights are back in July I banged on about these earlier in the year because I really really enjoyed them when they came out over Christmas and through the new year and it's basically by the team behind the Goes Wrong show and theatre shows like The Play That Goes Wrong and comedy about a bank robbery etc and they basically improvise a very silly movie based on audience suggestions and this time as well as the online audience they're going to have an in-studio audience as well just a small audience I think you know depending on the capacity they're allowed to have but nevertheless it's going to add more of an atmosphere to it so it's going to be even funnier I think and a couple of the shows audio described as well which is brilliant on Sunday the 11th of July and Saturday the 24th of July at 7.30pm and then there are also shows with sign language as well so it's great that they're being accessible and yeah it's just great to see them back if you want to know what it's all about then there's a 
whole blog post I made that I'll link to in the description talking about the previous run of shows. I do highly recommend it. They are hilarious. So then finally moving on to music and Madness had a couple of fun things on during the month. First was a show you had to pay to see exclusively called The Get Up and this was a show mixing comedy and music and the comedy was helpfully written for them with the aid of the far show's Charlie Higson who also guest starred in it as well. So yeah, little bits of chatter and sketches between some of the songs but for the most part it was about the band performing of course and during the first half of the show it was all about the band's early formation and some of their early songs and they did a couple of covers during that as well where they were joined by uh, guest singers Roland Gift from the Fine Young Cannibals and Paul Weller from the Jam so it was great to see them involved and then during the second half of the show it was like a proper concert by Madness with lots of their biggest hits of course so that was all good fun and before the show when you went onto the live stream early the band were showing and commentating on some of their music videos which was quite interesting and then there's also the brand new three-part documentary they've made called Before We Was We based on the book of the same name and as I said last month this was exclusively made for AMC UK and BT so you had to be subscribed to BT in order to see it all but they did release episode one for free on their YouTube channel which is very kind and then they inadvertently made public the links for the other two briefly before they then hid the videos away as unlisted again so I have actually been able to see all three episodes even though I wasn't <laughs> really supposed to so yeah it's been great to see the entire series it's really interesting it's lovely to see all the band members talking in the present day as they reminisce about their past and they talk about their childhood and the trouble they got into and how they came together as a band and their rise to fame and all that kind of stuff it's a very honest documentary to illustrate what they're talking about it uses several clips from their old documentary film Take It or Leave It which I already have on DVD anyway and is also available for free on Madness's YouTube channel but there's lots of other bits of footage in there as well some of it you may never have seen before and it's just really nicely edited together basically it's very interesting and very good fun and then if you are a fan of the band they also did a little pub quiz on their channel as well where they asked you about various songs and music videos and things like that so if you think you want to test your knowledge about them do so I had a little go I didn't do too badly and then as you know I like any excuse to mention my favourite band Queen and there are a few more reasons to do so this month so drummer Roger Taylor has made the surprise announcement of a new solo album coming out on October the 1st called Outsider he's going on tour with that as well so it'll be interesting to hear that the weekly clip series Queen the Greatest over on Queen's YouTube channel looking back at their 50 year career is currently looking back at the song We All Rock You and that's also going to be a heavy focus of my next album review post on my blog which is coming out later in June hopefully so look out for that too and then in the final episode of the current series of Kerry Ellis's podcast Keep Calm and Carry On she had special guest Brian May who turned the tables and interviewed her because they obviously get on very well they've done loads of work together they're working on a new album at the moment so it's a lovely chat between the two of them and it's well worth checking out the other episodes from Kerry's podcast as well because she has a variety of interesting guests on there and finally there have been a couple of nice choral covers of Queen songs as well that I've seen this month there's Radio Gaga by the Sweet Charity Choir and that was in tribute to Sam Heslop who went missing from a catamaran in the US Virgin Islands in March and hasn't been seen since and then also Bohemian Rhapsody by the GMIT Virtual Choir so there are a couple of nice little covers there and yeah that's it that's all I have to mention for this month I hope you enjoyed that variety of different bits and pieces I don't have anything special planned for June I'm just generally hoping to get out and about more so you know doing longer walks going up to London if I can you know meeting up with friends would be fantastic if at all possible you know maybe going to the shops we'll just see how things go basically and I hope you enjoy yourselves in a safe way too wherever you get up to during the month so yeah that is it thank you very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe as per usual and I will see you for another video very soon bye